If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to Downfall Network for more cool content. What's up everyone, Thrall's Model here once again. I am Necrotic Nick. And I am Jammin' John. And we have an album review for you. So once again, we have actually gone back to the land on under with an Australian band with Cauldron Black Ram and their new album, Slaver. This comes out on the 22nd as well on 20 bucks spin. This band has been around since 1996, and honestly, this is the first I've heard of them. Mm -hmm. And this is their fourth full length, and they feature members from Denouncement Pyre and Mournful Congregation. So a little bit of Black and Death, and a little bit of Death Doom. And a whole lot more in this <laughs> sound overall. This, by far, so far, has been one of the most interesting listens I've had as far as anything death metal oriented, or just metal oriented. The rhythm section in this band is on point. To do what they do, there's some very odd time signatures in here, and the, the drummer loves to play both on the beat and on the off beat, and then throws in some weird shit even then. Everything is accented really well, it's just weird. It's it, This is one of the most challenging lessons as far as if you are a very groove-oriented person, you like those nice tight pockets, those are there. But you have to sift through some very wild, like, demolich, inter-arma, sort of mixed together sort of thing, and it's just, it's wild. The first track I really noticed it on was Smoke Pours from the Orifices of the Crematory Idol. Good job. I said it right <laughs> the first time. Awesome intro. This has a lot of sort of, like, battle metal feel to it. Like, there's, like, these big epic yeah. moments with rolling snares, like, you know, an army slowly marching to just destroy the, Pelly The Bird. intro riff right off the bat is Yob. Yeah, there's a very Ugh. Yob feel <laughs> there, and Yob is love, as far as I'm concerned. Now, when you get into this heavy chug that comes in, this big, beefy, palmated chug, it throws you for a loop with this just weird off-time rhythm. Like, the guitars will speed up. Yeah, dude, so, like, <laughs> like it, it starts off as just a simple, like, just chugged meat and potatoes riff, just slow as balls, but then the guitar riff speeds up for just a second to hit this really <laughs> odd pattern. Like, okay, so it, it repeats itself probably 12 times, and I only caught it twice. <laughs> I haven't caught like it yet. I, like, I only <laughs> caught the count twice, but, like, so it was almost like I was having a seizure listening to the rest of it, just like, uh, uh, you, uh. You, you look like a seagull on the beach, like randomly pecking <laughs> in the sand. Like it, it's it's so hard to latch onto, but it, then it comes back to this big, kind of epic melody, back to the death march. You're like, okay, there's the groove again, and then of course it brings you back. That's like, Fuck, I have to find it again. Yep. This is sort of a microcosm of what's all over this album, and it is just wild to listen to. It's technical, but technical in a different sense. Right, so so like normally when you think of tech death, you think of crazy guitar licks over blast beats, over... The faceless just, necrophages. Yeah, just, yeah, in necrophages, right. That's what I think about when I think about yeah. tech death. Um, and this isn't that. No. It's just the strangest riff patterns. And and somehow they keep it all together. I'm, I'm actually reminded of the first time I jammed Meshuggah. Same. Um, the, and the first record I heard was Chaos Fear. I think yours was Destroy, Race, and Prove. Yes, it was. But when I listened to Meshuggah, one of the things that got me really into them was the fact that I didn't understand what they were doing. Like I was just like, what in the hell is this? Yeah. Um, because it wasn't easily countable or anything. And this is the same thing. Like You listen to it, and it, it to the naked ear, it sounds straightforward. But then when you pull it apart... It's anything it, but. Yeah, like, <laughs> congrats on the song writing here because it's it's really just it's not very contemporary it's contemporary in moments but there really aren't any parts in here that really follow like a verse chorus sort of structure at all yeah not, not in a single song was i able to really go okay here's the verse well here's the chorus well here's something now when i looked at this band on encyclopedia mental it pretty much just said black and death metal and this is far more than that there are mm -hmm. elements of black metal there's Pretty much death metal is the core of this. Yeah. But there's a lot of like sludge and sort of doom metal here, namely death doom. Yeah. And that's pretty much I think the mournful congregation part of them coming out. Stones break bones really ramps up the death doom feel. And this one 
actually sort of changes around the vocals. All three members of this band participate on vocals here, too. And this one brings in the really low, gurgled, mm -hmm. like, incantation sort of vocals on here. Which there's a lot of on the album, but it is very diverse yeah. on the same right. Even there's even some cleans on here that are very Attila-ish. They're almost kind of like tortured yeah. crooning. Lots of black and shouts. There's almost parts on here that sound like spoken word. Graves of Winning Graves actually has that. And this is by far, I think, the most challenging song on this album in terms of the song structure is so all over the place. There are punk chords. Yeah. There, there are... Like, there's, also, there's almost like a napalm death moment, and then it, it backs off and it slows down a little bit, and then it speeds up, and then it slows down. It, it's really <laughs> odd. It kind of reminds me... Especially in terms of like the song titles, like some of them seem like a little like kind of hammed up, but in a fun way, kind of like uh, Macabre. Yeah. And Macabre plays a lot of interesting, sludgy, sort of off time stuff too. But this is like Macabre mixed with Demolich, which Demolich is their own thing. And yep. they're amazing at it. This is very similar to it, but at the same time, you get sludge metal stuff in here. Like there are parts in here that definitely remind me of. The Melvins, if they were a death yep. metal band. Yep. In terms of like the not so contemporary style and structure and just kind of the big beefy tone and everything and dissonance yeah. all over the place. I, I mean, these guitars are tuned so low, they're lower than my already low standards. <laughs> now, this album has two instrumentals, and I both love them and hate them, but I hate them for a good reason. His appearance and his exultance. His Exultance is the last track, and his appearance is somewhere near, near the middle of the yeah. album. They are both awesome instrumentals, yes. and I think they should have been combined as one epic song. And if not, they should. And if not, they should have been longer. They're way yeah. too short. They're they're probably actually some of the better songs. I, 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 that, in look, terms of like his Exultance, stuff, yeah. his Exultance is just stomp, pound, chug. It's like Godzilla ripping his way through Japan. Yeah, it's just heavy. Very almost anthemic, despite no vocals on it, it just feels very empowering. There's no voice to really guide you along, it's just the power of this chug. And his appearance really has that war march sound, which does continue on in Whore to War, which I thought was one of the best tracks on here too. It kind of kept up with that, you know, very anthemic war metal feel. Like, there's a lot of just there's, battle. Yeah, there's this. a lot of just like snare march, and they, they and they just drone a riff over a snare march, it, and it's... It's actually quite cool. It's powerful. Yeah. Uh, another track that stood out to me was The Pit. Um, first of all, hopefully you're not at the bottom of the pit having to eat your way out. <laughs> no, no. You'll be full halfway through. Um, so the, I guess, would be the verse riff. I guess. I guess. <laughs> Again, not a lot of contemporary song structure here. It's just all over the place. But, but there are rep there is repetition in yeah, multiple yeah. moments. And and there's a so there's a point where I guess it could be considered the, the verse, um, where the riff almost has this kind of like swingy like waltz feel to it. But I mean just so imagine like what, Doom Waltz? Yes. Yeah. It it's really Death weird. Swing. But it, it's <laughs> like a fiercely fast chug, but it's very waltzy, like it follows that that waltzy meter. And it's really odd, but it has honestly one of the biggest hooks in the entire song. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this one, I think, really laid on the dissonance and the verses, which I really like. They're very moody. Oh, yeah. And when it comes down to the atmosphere, a lot of it, I think, is carried by the vocals just changing around. There's a lot of reverb on the vocals. and Really, it all sounds like it was recorded in a cave. Or a dungeon. Or a dungeon. Or, or you know, a giant tomb. I was going to say, some <laughs> crazy tomb. <laughs> But it really adds the overall feel of this. So when you're not bewildered by all the rhythms you hear, you're kind of drawn into this really murky atmosphere. This is quite a listen. Mm -hmm. It's it's very immersive. And honestly, this is one of the weirdest things I've listened to this year, which I'm sure there's tons of weird right, out I'm, there we haven't listened to. Right, I'm sure there's tons of stuff we haven't caught, but this was pretty strange. Rhythmically, honestly, I haven't heard very many bands do this sort of thing. And these guys do it exceptionally well. Except for... Again, car bomb. Car bombs, car bomb. They're, I, yeah. Humanity's last breath, as far as all their changes are concerned. But then again, this is nothing like that. It's tonally a lot different than what you would call like technical metal at all. This is still very much the realm of like death doom or black and death or black and sludge yeah. or I, I don't know. 
it's its own kind of heavy, really. Mm -hmm. And overall, I'm going to give it three and a half stars. I really dug this listen. Doesn't really give you a lot of the big grooves and hooks all the time, but when it does, generally they're really, really good. And I haven't listened to a challenging listen like this no. in a while. Like, this is very heady, but at the same time, it's just caveman pummeling. And I kind of like the mix of that dynamic. It, this is a really interesting listen, and I think honestly, if I listen to it more, I'm probably gonna get into it more. And I said the same thing. I'm also gonna rate it three and a half. It was just a crazy concept overall. I haven't heard anything like that in a while, if ever. Again, writing songs like that. Props to the band for being able to keep all that together because I don't think I would have. Yeah, and over time, I'm definitely gonna listen to this again because I, I want to understand it. Yeah, I wanna, first of all, I just want to get the count in that stupid song. <laughs> it's going to drive me nuts. So, um, yeah, man. Three and a half. Killer album. I, I had a great time. Yeah. So, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all the time. We will catch you later.